I'm a massive fan of Zack Snyder. I've defended the man and his great movies for years. I don't love everything he's done, but he is a favorite director of mine, and I love a lot of what he's done. So I was stoked that his once-pitched Seven Samurai Star Wars film would get to be its own thing. But I was also nervous because Snyder invites so much controversy just for being himself. His detractors clearly having a bias against him and putting personal attacks in other reviews. But then on the other hand, you have some of the cult-like superfans personally attacking other people, which is not okay. It's maddening and just I just want to watch and like his movies or dislike his movies if I want to. But I also tend to think Zack Snyder tends to get way too much flack that I don't see being consistent with other properties and characters but we will get into that. The biggest thing here is, is Rebel Moon any good or should you believe all the bad press? The short answer is yes. It is a good but flawed film. The long answer, to really have this conversation proper, we need to wait for the director's cut, which has become a bit of a common theme with Zack Snyder and some other filmmakers. Personally, I blame the studio system and how they handle one times for theatrical releases as the big issue there. That's the crux of where this came from. But also, this was Netflix's idea that Zack Snyder has said, to clearly get a more family-friendly PG-13 cut for the numbers and then retarget the diehards with the extended cut, touted as the true vision of the movie. It's reported R-rated, a bit different, it features an hour more footage. Okay, fine, I'm whatever, I'm fine with that, I'm used to that. If you want to do it, on paper I get it. But they should have released them at the same time, prompted the viewer to pick which version best suited them based on a description in Netflix's UI. Because it feels like anyone who decently liked Rebel Moon will have the uphill battle of, but just watch the director's cut bro, it's better bro, come on bro, Zack Snyder's a visionary bro. I, I, I love Zack Snyder and I, I agree with these things. But I am tired of having to say that. I love getting better versions of films, but this is a marketing scheme that I think is backfiring. But then again, it did allow Snyder to do even more of what he wanted, so who can blame him with the offer who probably gave him more money anyway? But at the same time, streaming has sort of negated the need to parse down movies for theatrical releases, and then they get an extended cut on DVD. You can just do the true cut up front. And if it's a marketing thing, okay, maybe tone down the language, don't do as much blood if you want, but why cut down the runtime? I just, I'm struggling with it. But that missing runtime is so noticeable. Large sections of time skips, planet hopping, and nothing besides character introductions really reside here once we get into that full motion of the story, especially in the second act. The character of General Titus has like four lines. Ray Fisher's character, Darian Bloodaxe, he's, he's barely in it. And while he leaves a large impact because he's really cool and it's a great performance, it's dis disappointing how underutilized he was. That can be said of pretty much all of the cast aside from Sophia Botella, I hope I pronounced that right, who carried the movie well. The performances are good. All these introductions are credible and feel epic in scope with a rich, focused mythology. And this is the stuff Snyder excels at. But it's lacking the delivery of making us truly buy into their journeys and rewarding the discovery after such setup because there's not much more given. I'm hoping some of that will change with part two coming next year, and I'm positive that part one director's cut will dig into these issues. I've also seen a lot of this criticism hurled at the dialogue, and I think it's far too overblown and people looking for things to complain about. And I know that sounds a little pretentious, and I'm not saying this is Blade Runner 2049 levels of writing, but it's also not the absolute crap fest of line delivery people would have you believe. Now, I enjoyed Army of the Dead for what it was, but that had this criticism to me. I thought the dialogue was really rough. And while Snyder and his team's obvious weakness is still writing overall, particularly in dialogue, in my opinion, this was a big step in the right direction and an overall improvement. The dialogue is fine. It's not always subtle, but I appreciated several moments of it and several lines in there. The world building is vast, but also more subtle than I thought. It's just a lived, breathed in world full of crazy aliens, cool weapons, which the cool weapons are also underutilized, and interesting factions. I never felt like too much exposition was being thrown at me all at once save one spot, and that was the opening narration. But here's the thing. It was a lot to dump in a voiceover with no backup imagery. But guess what? Star Wars does the same thing. This is Star Wars inspired, and this is their version of the opening crawl. Instead of giant floating yellow letters setting the story, setting the world, you get a voiceover and the fascist phallic looking ship and wormhole, again, not so subtle Snyder, setting up the world. 
I am formally calling anyone out who excuses it in Star Wars, but it's critical here for the same reasons. In fact, that goes with how the film approaches world building as a whole. It's clearly doing the things Star Wars was praised for and being rebuked for it. Don't come at me with that it needs to do it well because that's not what I'm seeing and hearing. There's a double standard of, well, this works in Star Wars. Star Wars doesn't have to explain all these things. Star Wars can name drop all these things. Star Wars can have all this exposition dump and Star Wars is perfect. I, I agree. I'm not saying Rebel Moon's perfect, but in this regard, it honors its inspiration well. Something else that really bothers me is I keep seeing that there's no reason given to care about the characters. And I see this a lot nowadays. And this actually bothers me a bit, not just for this movie, but a lot of movies. When a film has an underdeveloped character, I can write them off as nothing burgers or feel the desire to wish there was more for them in a story. But to say I don't care about them or for someone to say that, I find it be kind of reductive. Yes, Rebel Moon desperately needs time to flesh out these characters and give us more reasons to root for them and invest in their story because we don't know too much. Because they are interesting concepts not given appropriate time for growth or knowledge but i still care about them not just because they're cool concepts or because they live in a harsh world which is more than enough to care there but more importantly they're human beings yes it's a fictional story but films invest in our emotions and yes the more we know about a character the more we can invest emotionally but ultimately when a, there's a good character and sometimes even an evil character and something happens to said character i don't wish ill will on other human beings and as a christian movie lover i care about them simply for being because they're another creation in the Omaga Day, just like me. And there's this severe pivot to a criticism of not caring about these characters at all that lacks a sense of empathy, sympathy, and morality when watching stories about other humans suffer. I care about their struggles because they struggle, and that matters. Yes, I want more story with it too. But man, to say there's no reason to care about anyone here ignores the entire first act of the film. Innocent people are slaughtered, subjugated, taken advantage of, tortured, and... Uh, murdered uh, I would ask anyone to check their heart if that doesn't at least make you care about the the journey that these characters are at least trying to go on even if we don't know enough about them to buy completely into loving their stories just yet all right enough of my soapbox rant rebel moon also quite clearly was intended to be r-rated as there are cuts around violence i didn't expect that seemed a little sloppy and there's fairly egregious use of slow motion which is another not so subtle snyder signature i admit it doesn't even really bother me here but I can also admit it's overused at times. It doesn't add much to every action sequence, only a handful. And there was a time where I was like, okay, I see what people are saying. Time to step on another soapbox. This movie is gorgeous. If shallow depth of field bothers you with its streamlined vistas and expensive lensing techniques, then okay. Personally, the more I learned about photography and videography and filmmaking and what I know goes into it, the more impressed I am when people can use it so effectively, especially in something of this scale. I don't know of many other blockbusters shot in this way. In fact, I want more shallow depth behind me but you know limited with space and everything some people want to read the movies in the back some people want them completely blurred out again it's a taste thing it's different i just don't understand that it looks bad because it's gorgeous the production design and vfx are also astounding each frame looking like it could either be a painting when it's a wide shot or a photorealistic sci-fi moment captured for real in a photo shoot. It's gorgeous. All around, the, the plot engaged me. The tension is built up well. There's a giant plot twist that I honestly didn't really see coming. It tricked me. The action is exciting, but it is a little too indulgent in slow motion. And it's refreshing to get a brand new original science fiction property. But it also ends in a really strange place, giving heavier part one vibes than intended. The aforementioned character stuff leaves a lot of story to be desired, which we know is out there. And I ask myself, if I I didn't know there was a director's cut would i be more critical would it bother me at all it probably would bother me but because i know more is coming i can soften on that criticism because this isn't the real true version of rebel moon it's pretty obvious this one was cut up censored and heavily shortened to meet the pg-13 demands when the world itself is demanding more because of how much care when you're crafting the the unique lore the setting and the tone of the story in short i was telling people i loved rebel moon but really I love the idea of it, that I am quite hopeful that both the director's cut and part two, and probably its director's cut, will push to helping it reach the idea that it represents. As of right now, it falls short of greatness by simply being too rushed and a bit too indulgent when it didn't need to be in its story, some of its craft. But for a first dive into a new deep world, the water is more shallow than I'd hope. Insert shallow focus joke. Yeah, I'm sorry. Another way to say it, there is meat to chew on here, but I want more to digest. You know, I'm just up with the metaphors. I give Rebel Moon 3.5.
out of five stars for now. The director's cut is coming. Make sure to comment below what you thought of the movie. Don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing for more like this. Remember, always look for the good. Thank you.